sorry, sorry. Because that face is written worries and pain and lines all over that face. You just look at the man's face and you feel sorry for him. Poor woman as well. You don't see any peace and contentment and tranquility on the face anymore. You don't see any nur, any light on the face anymore. And so there is no peace in the heart. Could it be that that stress affects the quality of the production of sperm? I don't know. But there is going to be this precipitous decline in the birth, birth of baby boys. When you have this great disparity between the number of men to the number of women, well then, who will win the elections if it's 50 to 1? Huh? Women control? <laughs> women control the election? Every election, they go win it. And they will take over from men, take over public life, take over the control of public life. That's going to be like an upside down world. As though the sun is rising from the west. But the other side of the coin is if you have 50 women to one man, only very few women will have husbands. And at that time when a woman has a husband, she would be paying very careful attention to the hadith. You know which one? Trust in Allah, but tie your camel. <laughs> but, but the overwhelming majority of women would not have husbands. Okay? If the overwhelming majority don't have husbands, and marriage involves one man and one wife, then how will these unmarried women deal with the situation? Easy. Marriage will have to go. You have to dismantle the institution of marriage. And that has already started. When you see divorce taking place, commonplace, one in every two marriages ending in a divorce. Tomorrow will be two in every three ending in a divorce. It's only a matter of time. Before marriage itself disappears. And then the prophecy is fulfilled. The overwhelming majority of babies who are born will be born outside of marriage. He said, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, that women would dress like men. Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, He is not of us who imitates women, and she is not of us who imitates men. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu now narrates two ahadiths which are in Tabarani. The Prophet والسلام, cursed the man who wears woman clothing. I, with my own eyes, I saw Rudy Giuliani dressed as Marilyn Monroe <laughs> and singing Happy Birthday, Mr. President. The Prophet والسلام, cursed the man who wears woman clothing. Today, when they dress up like a woman, you can't tell he's a man. Hmm? And he cursed the women who wear men's clothing. Curse them. And the next hadith. Women who are naked, even though they are wearing clothing, are women who have gone astray. And they will cause others to go astray. They will not enter into paradise, nor will they even smell the fragrance of paradise, even though that fragrance can be smelled from afar. So they dress like, like men to go to work. The feminist revolution says to them that you need to go to work. So that you're not dependent on those brutes called men for your livelihood. Independence and freedom 
is meaningful only when it has economic independence in it. And so they go to work and dress like men. When they go to work, there is now rivalry between the male and the female because she is invading and taking over what was previously a man's domain. He worked to maintain her and the children. But now she is working not to help him. No, no. She is working because this is freedom for her and independence. He has a career. I can also have a career. And so there's going to be friction now between the male and the female. An adversarial relationship will exist between the male and the female. And now we come to the verse of the Quran before we return to the slave woman. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the creation of the male and the female, he established an analogy with the creation of the night and the day. Look in the sky and you will see that the night and the day are eternally attached to each other. They are not rivals of each other. They don't fight each other and quarrel with each other and put and pan flying all over the house. No, they are attracted to each other and they complement each other like two halves coming together to make a whole. And look up in the sky and you'll see it. Secondly, if there was no night, only day, who would want to live in such a world? And if there was only night and no day, who would want to live in such a world? It is when you have day and night that now it becomes something to be enjoyed, something meaningful, something that makes sense, something that works. When the day is performing the duties and functions of the day, and the night is performing the duties and functions of the night, then the system works perfectly. But look at something else. When the day is coming to an end and approaching the night, do you notice the excitement as the day is approached, about to enter into the arms of the night? There is excitement. There is a longing for each other. And that excitement is revealed in the painted sunset. All the colors of the sunset mirrors the excitement of the day as he approaches the night. And so when the day is day and the night is night, there is attraction for each other. Notice that. It's a very important point. We would not want to do anything that would diminish that attraction or destroy that attraction. No. Then the day enters into the arms of the night, and all through the night is a time for rest, and there's a time for sleep, and there's a time for love, and there's a time for worship, and there's a time for meditation, and then there's a time to say goodbye. And as the day is leaving now, the night is holding on to him. Because when the day arrived with the night, it was like a whole big ball of fire going down into the sea. But now when the day is departing, it's one ray of light at a time. Slowly, slowly, slowly the light comes. That is the night holding on to the day. The intense attraction for each other. When this attraction remains intact, then the system works. 